partnered by Times Influence. Warm welcome to Dun & Bradstreet Everest Industries Limited in Pro Awards 2017. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me indeed pleasure as I welcome each and every one of you right here. I'm sure each one of you will agree the Dun & Bradstreet Award is truly a barometer of the Indian economy, a report card of how well India Inc. is doing. Today is no exception. Yes, we are about to present an economy imparting segment, which is, of course, the infrastructure. Its influence spreads right across every critical industry, and it is indeed the driver of every economy. The 10th edition of India's leading infrastructure companies, 2017, and honored excellence within the sector through the 7th edition of Dun & Bradstreet Everest Industries Limited Infra Awards. I'm Isha Bhalla, and I'd like to welcome all of you to this Red Letter event and to personally extend a warm welcome to you. We have with us Mr. Manish Sinha, the Managing Director of Dun & Bradstreet India. Please put your hands together as I present the man himself, Mr. Sinha. It is indeed my pleasure to welcome you to the Dun & Bradstreet Infrastructure Awards. Thank you very much for being here. We are blessed from the point of view of the quality of the government that we have, represented by Sri Nitin, who's with us today. Uh, we need a government that operates with courageous integrity, that has the ability and has the willingness and is unafraid of the significant investment, which clearly, as I described to you, the, uh, the news of the last one month has demonstrated. It's also a government that is willing to make investments in areas like infrastructure. So on behalf of Dun & Bradstreet and our sponsor partners, I'd like to salute you. It is an honor for us to actually host a platform. We'd like to salute you. We'd like to welcome you to this event. And at the outset, I'd like to congratulate all the winners in advance. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for being here and enjoy the day today. Let me yield the podium to this very dynamic personality. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for none other than former President and Managing Director and now Chief Business Advisor, DNB India, Mr. Kaushal Sampath. It is with great pleasure that I join Manish in welcoming you to the seventh Dun & Bradstreet Infra Awards to felicitate the leading infrastructure projects as well as infrastructure companies in the country. At this event, we will also have the opportunity to showcase the 2017 edition of our publication, India's Leading Infrastructure Companies. After a prolonged period, and there's no better way of putting it, but after a prolonged period of stagnation, the Indian infrastructure sector has gathered significant momentum in the last three years on the back of the NDA government's razor-sharp focus on the sector. When we focus on the infrastructure subcategory, India's ranking has improved from the 81st position in 15-16 to 66 in 2017-18, compared with China, which is at the 46th place. In terms of overall transport infrastructure, India ranked 25th amongst 137 countries, ladies and gentlemen, slightly behind China, which was ranked 21st. In terms of quality of railway infrastructure, India ranked 28th. However, due to legacy issues, our rankings are poor in terms of quality of roads, ports, and air transport infrastructure. We are privileged to have Sri Gadkari ji with us today, and I'm sure that he will provide us insights into the government's plans and aspirations for the infrastructure sector in the country. Let us collectively build world-class infrastructure that makes this aspiration a reality. Jai Hind. 
I'm now about to present to you our next speaker, who indeed represents our title partner, Everest Industries Limited. Mr. Aditya Vikram Somani is the chairman of Everest Industries Limited, India's fastest growing building solutions company. Please put your hands together for Mr. Aditya Vikram Somani. Sir? India is on uh, the threshold of a huge infrastructure boom. We have uh, a targeted investment of 25 lakh crores uh, over uh, the period of three years. Is it going to happen? And uh, if it happens, is it going to happen uh, in the right way? I think that is the big issue. Uh, I think we face some huge, huge challenges in terms of speed, and in terms of sustainability. If we do not address these issues as uh, a country, as companies, as uh, people awarding contracts, I don't think we will be able to do it. And I think it is important for the government and for corporates to realize that this should not become a dream. We should not just become uh, spoken about in the annals of history, ki mehnat ki par Let's build India, let's build our country with, with greater strength, with more speed, with more safety. Jai Hind. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it now gives me immense pleasure as I am about to introduce to you the man that each one of us have been waiting to hear from. Please put your hands together as I welcome Honorable Minister Sri Nitin Gadkari ji. India is the fastest growing economy in the world now. Under the leadership of our Prime Minister, we have already decided to giving highest priority for development of infrastructure. And today, as far as our government is concerned, we are taking a lot of decisions which accelerating the development of infrastructure in our country. I feel that India is moving fast. There are some problems because GST after independence is the most important and biggest economic reform. If there is a will, there is a way. And if there is no will, there is only survey, discussion, seminar, committee, subcommittee, research group. I am not talking about you. <laughs> Thank you very much. We're now about to begin with our panel discussion on a very special theme of how has market transformation influenced the need for faster, greener, and smarter infrastructure. Once again, may I request all of you to please put your hands together for our moderator, Mr. Koshal Sampath, the Chief Business Advisor, done in Bradstreet, India. My first question is actually for Mr. Uh, Lobo, who is on the construction side and Mr. Garg, who has built all these uh, fabulous structures in record time. How do you make sure that construction is quick enough, Manish, in order to keep up with the plans? I would say that uh, uh, it's pretty uh, conservative thought that I'm going to share is on the planning part. A lot of time we actually jump into executing a thing with maybe a technology that is, uh, you know, that, that actually uh, delivers very rapid way of constructing things. But when you hit roadblocks, if you were to just analyze any project delays and if you dissect, most of the time it would be that we didn't think through part A, part B or part C. So I would say the, the way towards rapid uh, construction of anything, whether it is infrastructure, whether it is building, whether it is anything, is to think through all aspects. In tier three projects, is capital coming easily into the projects? I mean, for affordable housing, because everyone wants to, uh, affordable housing is now the newest buzzword. Everyone wants to invest in affordable housing. Are you getting enough capital easily? Most of the smart cities are tier three cities. But where is the capital available? So in the scenario where capital is not easily available, the speedy construction also gets affected. Even assuming that you have all your approvals in place, if the capital is not in place, if the funding is not available, it's difficult. Solar, wind, small hydro, biotech, or bio, not biotech, bioenergy. 
you know, where would you lay your bets if we were talking 10 years, 15 years down the line? I think in 2030, we should have maybe 25-30% of energy coming from wind plus solar. If government gets its act together and tries to push hydro, then 10 to 15% from hydro. And rest all has to be or will be the, the base load, which comes from either coal or some part of the nuclear. We are talking about nuclear also, which is not renewable, but clean power at least. I, I was going to ask you that, that, you know, what about nuclear? The rest of the world is moving away. Oh, well, not moving away, but there's reservations after Fukushima around nuclear. We are, you know, obviously pulling I, ahead in that or pushing ahead in that direction. Do you see a dichotomy there? I, I think our take on that is as long as everything is done in a balanced way, there, is, there are no issues. And the uh, world has learned a lot from Fukushima. France runs still more than 60% of renewables. Uh, so do a lot of other countries. It's not that one accident. I mean, sh should take everything away from that technology. That technology is super because it's land efficient. What needs to be seen is, though we are into renewables, and I should not be saying this, uh, renewables are land intensive, not land uh, efficient, right? Which nuclear is. So I think in the overall energy basket, we need energy security, energy stability, and e economic, uh, or, or let's say, affordable cost of energy. So everything taken together, I think 8, 10, 12 percent power coming from renewables will only add to the grid stability, will not take it, some, will not take something away. And now is the moment when we are about to unveil to you our publication, or shall I say, the 10th edition of India's leading infrastructure companies 2017, which will include an overview of infrastructure sector, along with listing of companies, profiles, their history, and of course, the performance highlights. Ladies and gentlemen, a moment that all of us have been waiting for, and I'd like to request our chief guest, Sri Nitin Gadkariji, along with our dignitaries on the dais to please join us as we bring to you Dun & Bradstreet, India's leading infrastructure companies 2017. A round of applause, please. We now enter a very, very special phase, yes? The felicitation ceremony of Dun & Bradstreet and Everest Industries Infra Awards 2017. Please put your hands together as I get set to introduce to you our first category, which is roads and highways. The award goes to none other than ILNFS Transportation Network Limited for the Nani Nashu Tunnel Road Project. Please put your hands together. This gentleman takes us to our next set, which is Bridges. The winner is Nava Yuga Engineering Company Limited, and the project in question, Bhupen Hazarika Setu. have a special mention award when it comes to bridges yes a clear winner for this category as well the special mention award in this category goes to afcon's infrastructure limited for their timely execution of the ganga bridge <laughs> to a segment that is close to all our hearts, railways, or shall we say metro rail, is our next category. And in this space, a clear winner, Lucknow Metro Rail Corporation, the 8.5 kilometer priority corridor of North-South Corridor. Water supply and sanitation. Let us put our hands together for VA Tech Wabag Limited. This one for their waste water treatment plant, KNC Valley Project. <laughs> this 
this is what takes us to our next category implementation excellence industrial building and the award goes to Kirby Building Systems India Private Limited for excellent execution of pre-engineered steel building structure shifts to industrial projects and in this category the award goes to Indian Oil Corporation Limited. And this brings us to new age, or shall we say, renewable energy solar rooftop. And uh, let us put our hands together for Wari Engineers uh, Limited. And in the category of renewable energy solar farms now, the winner is Tata Power Solar Systems Limited. <laughs> Next level, which is uh, wind, I'd now like to request all of you to please put your hands together for a winner, Hero Future Energies Private Limited. We move on to our next category, Power Transmission, and the winner is Vardha, Hyderabad, 765 KV DC line, and taking away the prize is KEC International Limited. <laughs> our next category which is special mention power transmission please put your hands together because this technology will help to suffice the future capacity with ease let's put our hands together for Kalptaru power transmission limited for having put into operation the 400 kV multi-circuit transmission line many many congratulations to you sir Ladies and gentlemen, once again, I'd like to request all of you to please put your hands together as I request Mr. S.D. Jwar, Senior Vice President, Hindustan Construction Company Limited to join us on stage. Please put your hands together, Power Hydroelectric. <laughs> As we move on to our next set of category, I'd also like to invite on stage the presence of Mr. Sanjay Mathur, CEO, RMC and Key Accounts Business, Ultratech Cement. Please put your hands together as he steps forward. Construction and infrastructure development, uh, we now have a very special segment. And now, this is going to be for Company Performance Awards. These honor infrastructure companies who have over the past shown financial and operational performance over par. And I'd now like to invite on stage the first sector, which is construction and infrastructure development, roads and highway. The winner is Ashoka Bilcon Limited. We are now moving the fast lane roadways to fast track railways. Yes, the award goes to Aircon International Limited. And this is what takes us to our next award, Construction and Infrastructure Development Power. Let us now put our hands together for Kalptaru Power Transmission Limited. Award, construction and infrastructure development overall, yes, with the diversification that they have led, they truly deserve to be here. 
please welcome Mr. R.K. Bansal, Head Road and Runway and Elevated Corridor Business, North East and Maharashtra, to join us on stage and receive the award on behalf of Larson and Tube Roll Limited. Many, many congratulations. At this point, I'd like to thank Mr. Mathur for joining us. Thank you so very much, sir. So now, please put your hands together with Power Generation. The award goes to NTPC Limited. And now it's time for a shift focus from power generation to power transformation. And the award goes to Power Grid Corporation of India Limited. Our next uh, award is Power Distribution through Power Generation and Transmission. It's now time for Power Distribution. And now, please put your hands together for CESC Limited. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is what brings us to our standalone category. And first up is a Telecom Infrastructure Development and a clear cut winner there, Bharti Infratel Limited. Please put your hands together. This is what brings us to our next category, ports. Yes, it was a smooth sale for Adani Ports and a Special Economic Zone Limited. Please put your hands together. This is what brings us to our finale award of the 24 awards and this one honors the best infrastructure finance company. Please put your hands together for Rural Electrification Corporation Limited. And at this moment, I truly like to appreciate the presence of our chief guest and sir, a token of our appreciation to you, and we continuously look forward to your support. May I please request Mr. Sinha, along with Mr. Samani, to present, sir, with a token of our appreciation. A moment uh, for you to remember us, and in a small way, leading these discussions into reality. Thank you so very much. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause as we thank, sir, for his time and his vision. Thank you so very much, sir. Thank you. May I request you to please take a seat? I'd like to thank our partners, our title partner, Everest Industries Limited, our principal partners, Ultratech Cement Limited and REC Limited. I'd also like to thank our automobile partner, Mahindra and Mahindra Limited, our co-partners, Hero Future Energies Private Limited and Embassy Industrial Parks Private Limited, along with our television partner, ET Now. Once again, as I thank you all on behalf of the entire team of DNB, this is Isha Bhalla signing off. Thank you. Partnered by Times Influence.